So hello everyone and welcome to the BSD Dev Room. And my talk today will be uh, FreeBSD specific, but a lot of what I'm going to cover actually does apply to the other BSDs like Open and NetBSD. So my name is Deb Goodkin and I'm the Executive Director of the FreeBSD Foundation. So who am I? Uh, so I've been with the foundation f since 2015. So I think that's, uh, I think I'm on my 13th year or on my 14th year now. And uh, my background um, is engineering, I actually came from more low level firmware engineering in the storage world. So I worked on disk drives from uh, the actual 14 inch and down to the two and a half inch and, um, and worked various um, areas of that for 20 years. And so my background actually is not operating systems, but as someone who's running the organization that is supporting uh, one of the biggest, largest, best um, operating systems out there, um, I've um, put upon myself, actually over the years, I've been trying to learn more about operating systems, specifically FreeBSD. And so this year, my goal is to um, gain more uh, uh, applicable skills, maybe not as a developer. I think I'm sort of done with that, but um, learning more from the user's perspective and so we can go around the world teaching FreeBSD and advocating for FreeBSD. So my goals for today in this talk, so I have 25 minutes and I'm hoping to have some time at the end to um, answer any questions. And so the goals really is to share some of the history with you and, and why uh, people and organizations are using FreeBSD and why you should use FreeBSD or contribute to the FreeBSD project. So there's three main components of the FreeBSD world. And so on the top, uh, this, so that represents the operating system. It's an open source uh, computer operating system and it's been around for 25 years now. And uh, the second component would be the actual project, and that's comprised of the, the people, the community, and you have uh, four, over 400 committers and, and developers, as well as um, actual thousands of people around the world who are helping um, contribute to the FreeBSD uh, project. And then the last here is, this is an uh, old picture, actually, of some of my board members. And, um, and so the foundation is a, is a separate, organization, we're a nonprofit. In the U.S., it's referred to as a 501c3, and what it means is we're a nonprofit for the public good. And, and just since most people here are probably more familiar with Linux, and there's the Linux Foundation, which is very big, they're actually a trade association, and that's why you'll see so many corporate sponsors, because that is their, uh, their purpose, is to support the, uh, the corporations out there that are using Linux. So what is FreeBSD? So this is where you'll find, <laughs> uh, so yes, it is not a Linux distribution. And, uh, and people do think that, uh, that, you know, the uninformed people uh, um, think that it is a Linux distribution. Uh, it is one of the largest, uh, most successful open source projects around. Because I mean, there's thousands of projects. If you look at GitHub, you, you'll see, I mean, it actually could be in the millions. And, and one difference, too, bet, um, between uh, FreeBSD and Linux is Linux is just the kernel. And then you have all the distributions that put the user LAN and tools around it. So FreeBSD is, is all of that. It's, it includes the tools and the user LAN. And then we have over uh, 30,000 packages um, supported. And it may be, I think it may be actually at 34,000 now. And then it's created by a community of um, highly technical people as well as people who want to gain and improve their technical skills. And it works on very, uh, many different platforms. And, um, and then also tens of millions of deployments out there. So I know this isn't the best looking uh, timeline out there, but what we try to do, um, and this is actually, there's three slides, to show you how we're FreeBSD descended from. And so, in 1969, and I won't go through every box because it could get boring, but, but really in the end, it actually is really interesting and you can find a lot of this information online. And we have some of this, the information on our website too. But 50 years ago, Unix was created. And I believe that there's a keynote at the end tomorrow by 
uh, John Mad Dog Hall, who's going to give a talk on the 50 years of Unix. So if you can get into that room, because I know I'm going to try to listen to him. His, his talks are great. And, um, and he's going to be talking about the history of Unix. So that'll be really interesting. And, um, but what we try to do is show um, you know, some of the main um, you know, milestones were like uh, Unix being converted to C code, so it's from assembly, so that means it's not platform dependent, and you can run it on different systems. And then, uh, and then for us, being brought to Berkeley, and then that's when it was de developed into the Berkeley Unix, and it's also referred to as BSD, which is Berkeley Software Distribution. And um, down to down here, the 386 BSD was actually the first open when it was the first version that was truly open source and available to anyone without having to have the the AT and T license. And then here, um, there's history of um, when it did come out. It was a, a short period that it was out before there was a lawsuit that was brought against it, and it was just by you know um, some it, it was. Owned at that time, it had moved from AT&T to Novell, and um, and so there were uh, some issues that were brought up from Novell, and uh, but then after all those were resolved, done. Oops, done. Before we go on, um, here you could see this is when FreeBSD was officially branched off of it or uh, forked off of it as, and then you could see sort of uh, this is where the different BSDs. Uh, we're broken out of here. So we had FreeBSD, NetBSD, OpenBSD, which are really the main three BSDs, and then there's uh, many other flavors too. And um, so it's just you know, sort of showing you how it descended from, it has this long history from originally from Unix. And then here, I, what I try to show were some of the main um, innovations that came out of FreeBSD and the timeline uh, of that from, you know, we're known for coming up with the jails and down to Jay Malik. Uh, you'll hear more about ZFS. I believe there's two talks going on today, one here and one in the main track about ZFS and continuing. Um, many other uh, features and innovations that I could not squeeze into this chart and be readable. So I don't know how many of you have seen this, it's on the uh, Unix wiki page, and, um, and I always find it so interesting to look at it. I mean, it's a total mess, but it shows you how, from, from Unix at the top, how you have all these different flavors of Unix from HP and, and Sun's version and, and IBM, and, and that's my history. I, after college, I started with IBM, and so we were... Uh, developing on mainframes, and so we had the IBM version of, of Unix. But I highlighted here uh, the uh, the BSDs, and so you can go to the the Unix wiki page, and um, no. okay. yeah, I mean this this slide isn't isn't great because I mean it just has so much on there, uh, but but I'm always fascinated just just following because you, you you can follow. FreeBSD and how it's not linear uh, because of the lawsuit, they actually had to go back and um, and and base the later uh, BSDs um, like well, there some of the lines you know, they move around and and it's all because of the lawsuit. So so anyway, so so I recommend you you going to uh, the wiki page and and looking at it. And then lastly, uh, the FreeBSD Foundation, we created our own timeline. And this was all because of celebrating the 25th anniversary, and, and we thought it was just really interesting to, uh, to go back and see where did we come from. And, um, and so this is a timeline that we have on the freebsdfoundation.org website. And, um, and actually, we even start earlier than here, but I wanted to include some of the slides from the timeline that we created and it has uh, nice pictures and, and just has little summaries of what happened at each uh, milestone. <laughs> and so all these I had covered in, um, in that original timeline that I had and how FreeBSD was created. The name was actually created in 1993. It was actually June 19, 1993, and the reason why I have that date is um, 
Well, first, my daughter's birthday is June 19th. And, but secondly, it was just, uh, we actually came up with a free, well, it's called National Free BSD Day. National is, it's a U.S. thing, but we actually call it, since we're an international organization, we call it Free BSD Day. And we, we, this year will be the third time that we're, we're celebrating that. So it's sort of fun. Um, Jordan Hutter, Hubbard, who brought in the, um, the ports and packages collection. And so here, we, from our timeline, we have um, some of those innovations broken out. And, and actually, this has been in the news recently with ARM using this technology, which was uh, developed at the University of Cambridge. So moving on. And if you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand. I'm trying to make it also maybe a little more interactive or informal so you don't have to worry about, you know, if, if you see a mistake, <laughs> you can point it out. Because we are trying to improve that, the timeline. And, and actually, if you do have events that, were, that you think are significant, uh, feel free to email me or someone um, on the team because we want to add that to the timeline because we, we just uh, we want to make it notable to, to everyone. So these are just a few of the FreeBSD users we, I couldn't, well, we don't know all the users out there, really. I mean, a, a lot of it is because of the license. So people, companies don't have to tell us that they're using it. Uh, they don't have to give us money to help us with our efforts. Uh, but these were some of the more notable, more recognizable logos that I wanted to put here to show that um, it is used out there. It's very prevalent. And actually, and the use is growing. And, and as someone uh, working for the foundation, we see that every day because people reach out to us and, um, and, and they may have questions about contributing back or um, just how to get involved more with the project. <clears throat> so most likely you use FreeBSD. I try to highlight some of the uh, more obvious um, technologies that you may be using every day and um, that, that is running FreeBSD or is based on FreeBSD. So the two you know, main ones would be the, the Apple products and, um, and then all the, anytime you're streaming a Netflix uh, movie, that's all run on FreeBSD systems. And the reason why is because of the high performance that they can get. So why use FreeBSD? Um, I won't go through every bullet. What I try to do was just highlight what, um, why people and organizations do use FreeBSD. And, um, and so if you go down the list, I mean, really, uh, I mean, the documentation is truly excellent. I, I've sat down and um, just read through the handbook. And the handbook, the FreeBSD handbook is a great way to learn about FreeBSD. It's very well written. But at, at the bottom here, um, this is a more recent thing that we've been hearing from students who are saying that FreeBSD is the cool open source project or operating system to use right now. And the reason why is, um, is so when Linux came around, then it was, um, you know, people were anti-Microsoft. You know, it's corporate, and you're sort of stuck with what you get. I mean, you don't have any control of the computer when you run Windows, and now you had this cool operating system that you had a lot of more control over. But, I mean, Linux uh, is very prevalent, and it's sort of becoming what Windows was in a way. And this is what we're hearing. So I'm not just saying that, you know, from my point of view. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're trying to take advantage of that um, by getting into more universities and running workshops. Um, but I mean, right, but we're also very small. And the, the foundation is very small. And so there's only so much we can do. And so what we're trying to do is help get more materials out there available for other people to run workshops and give presentations. But anyway, but we thought uh, that was pretty um, cool hearing that from students out there. And so we actually have some stu uh, students at various universities who want to do uh, FreeBSD install fests. And then here's a list of why uh, companies are using FreeBSD. And, um, and a, lot of, a lot of the reasons are because of the permissive license. And so they can use, um, it's used a lot in embedded systems because of that. But it's also known for uh, the release model and being uh, re very reliable. So when a new release comes out, then you are pretty sure that if you install this or upgrade your system, 
that uh, you're not going to have to back out anything, that it's going to work. And, uh, and so this is us from, I think this is the last um, big, it's one of our, I think this is our BSD event in Canada. Um, it looks very small. It's, it's funny how they do the pictures, and they try to be creative every year of trying to get the group in it, but it, but it makes it fun, too. And, um, and actually, the guy in the center, one of the guys in the center, he's normally here, but uh, I don't see he's arrived yet. And so anyway, uh, but anyway, here, that's just sort of the list of, um, oh, well, this is the list of how the project works, and um, which is a little different than, um, like, uh, how Linux is, that's, it's, I compare Linux just because it's, uh, FreeBSD is usually compared against Linux. They're both Unix-like operating systems, and so, but um, how the projects work are, are a little different. And so, ours is more, we're uh, made up of different teams, and so you may have the core team, the release engineering team, uh, you have a documentation team and various teams that help <clears throat> contribute uh, to the project. And, um, and so one key difference is that you have a core team that's actually elected, and they're elected by uh, committers, and uh, committers, they can actually um, submit uh, code to the source tree. And, um, and so you don't have uh, one person. You know, we're at Linux. They actually have different hierarchies of lieutenants, and uh, we don't have that different hierarchy. And it doesn't mean the, um, the code is anything less. It's still reviewed. Uh, by very um, capable and experienced uh, people. And, um, and so, so you actually have various people within the project who will review code changes, and code changes can be backed out if they're not accepted. And, um, and then you, and so you don't really have like feeding up to one person who makes the final decision. So it's definitely more democratic. And then um, it, this, I thought this was a cool graph showing the age distribution because it's, uh, uh, we're actually finding it's getting a little younger, so new people are joining, and um, and all we have to do is get rid of some of uh, these people up here, <laughs> and then it'll really be down. So we've been working on that. <laughs> so, but <laughs> try not to be real obvious with that. <laughs> but <laughs> and so I'm gonna. Um, this is just some of the different applications that um, you know that are out there for, from different corporations, how they use FreeBSD. And, um, and then just some of the places, I mean, it's a long list that really where FreeBSD stands out and why uh, you would use it and where it is actually successfully being used. And so the FreeBSD Foundation, that's what I run. And uh, so we were founded in March 2000. We are, like I was saying earlier, we're a public charity and um, we're based in Boulder, Colorado, and lastly, we are 100% uh, funded by donations. So why you should get involved, there's many reasons why you should get involved in FreeBSD and open source in general. And I mean, to me, like the biggest thing is really getting these marketable skills. So especially for younger people who uh, want to get skills to um, be able to get jobs, either if they're in the university or if, uh, if they're not uh, following that path. And, um, and so some of the things that stand out to me, because we're a global distributed project, uh, you can gain communication skills because you have to communicate with people around the world. You have different cultures and, uh, and different forms of communicating with people. It's a, can, most of the time it's an asynchronous form of communication. So you've got to learn how to deal with that, meaning you know, I email someone or message them on IRC, but they're asleep because they're on the other side of the world. So you have to learn how to deal with that and also how to collaborate with people also around the world and from different cultures and who might um, be different than you are. And uh, so, any, so it's, um, and that's something that you will actually use in most type of um, you know, jobs that you will get. I mean, most corporations are, are global. Uh, so how can you contribute to FreeBSD? Uh, here's my list of um, some of the ways that you can contribute. This, that is me down there giving uh, our, that was actually our first uh, FreeBSD install fest that we gave at the foundation office, so that was a lot of fun. And, um, and so I encourage people to get involved today.
And you can find out more by um, coming up to me. And like I said earlier, we have a free BSD table downstairs on the first floor. And, um, a, and a lot of people there who can answer your questions. And here I put together this uh, little cluttered screen, but I was trying to find like resources that you could find. And um, I mean, I made, just made it sound like it, it was really hard to find them. There's actually a lot of resources out there. And so these were the key ones that, um, that I like to um, sort of highlight. And from, this is, this is a great book, uh, learning about FreeBSD and using it from more of a sysadmin type of um, person. And, um, and then we had, um, um, and so, I mean, basically uh, just searching, so Kirk McKusick, who, oh, is that me? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. Slides show up as black. Oh, because of, um, that's interesting. That's Technical, that was really interesting. It went, went further. Um, okay, so, uh, so Kirk Bikusik, who's been with the project um, since the very beginning and also was one of the key people with BSD uh, from the early 80s. And I think he, he came on around, uh, yeah, in the early, late 70s, early 80s, and um, and so he. So if you search for Kirk McCusick, or you go just actually, I go to his website, and he has uh, videos that you can actually purchase. Or really, if you just search previous C history, you'll find his. He's given many talks around the world, and um, and his talks are always really interesting because he was part of it. So he'll talk about like back in 78, and Bill Joy was sitting in my office, and you know he was this lowly guy, and um, and so he'll he'll talk about the early days, and and it's so much fun to hear. And and the other thing about Kirk is that he's still part of the project, and so he goes to the most the BSD conferences around the world. And a lot of times he'll give his talk or he'll give a free BSD tutorial. And um, he's also on my board of directors, and, but he's very approachable. And so I'll see him, he'll have dinner, they'll be, he'll be having dinner with other people who are, are attending the conference and, and I'll get a kick out of listening to him telling stories about you know, the old days. And, but people can go up to him and ask him questions and he's just, He's available and he's interested and he's engaged and so, um, so that's one thing I really love about this community is um, not that it's perfect and you know everyone's you know so happy and friendly, but but I would say that most people in general are friendly and helpful <coughs> and um, and interested in you know helping raise you with everyone else so that. Um, maybe if your code isn't up to the level or the standards that. Um, that they will give you constructive feedback to help guide you, and um, so you do improve your, um, you know, your uh, programming skills or what, or whatever skills it is that you're contributing to the project. So, so anyway, so I know I have a minute and 42 seconds left, uh, so it's not a lot. But if you have any questions, I'm open to answering anything. So my purpose was really to sort of highlight FreeBSD, not to go into anything technical. Um, like I said, my background, as far as operating systems go, is isn't my background. But um, but Kirk has a like a ten hour tutorial on the kernel, and that is something that I've been watching and and just sort of and learning myself. So because um, I find it interesting. So and no questions. Okay. Well, please um, go to our table, donate twenty euros, and you can get this cool T-shirt. So thank you. <laughs>